To a great extent, our genotype determines who we are. Yet analysis of our genes enables us not only to make statements about ourselves, but about our blood relatives as well. Even information about our future can be obtained. Genetics is currently attracting more interest than almost any other discipline. Especially where our health is concerned, genetic information is playing an increasingly important role. Ever newer genetic tests are helping doctors to recognize existing diseases as well as to predict future ones. Diagnostic genetic tests serve to determine a particular disease. They are carried out when symptoms of sickness can already be observed and there is already suspicion of a disease. With the help of predictive genetic tests, in contrast, a person's tendency to contract a certain disease is investigated. This risk of disease is also referred to as a predisposition. During genetic tests, our genetic information is read. The investigator tests whether the DNA sequence in a single individual differs from the sequence found in other people. If the test does show there is a difference, it could mean that we have a predisposition for a certain disease. But whether that disease will ever occur is uncertain. Information like this is becoming increasingly important in biomedicine, but its use can also be very tricky. If we continue um, with shared electronic health records and we have a lot of interesting information accessible uh, by the internet in various ways, then it's, it's obvious that there will be misuse of personal data related to also predictive diagnosis. Uh, it will not be possible to keep this absolutely confidential. Even today, hundreds of genetic tests could provide data on our health. The number of these tests and their application in doctor's offices are set to increase sharply in the future. Even analysis of the entire genotype will be possible one day. This data will make it possible to draw up an increasingly comprehensive profile of our health and the risks posed to it. Vast amounts of sensitive personal information will soon no longer exist primarily on paper in patient files, but will be available in digital form as electronic patient files, ranging from disease histories to the results of diagnostic and predictive genetic tests. In doctor's offices, physicians and patients can decide what to do with all this data. But what happens to our genetic information outside the doctor's office? Who has access to it? Which data can be legally used? And for what purposes? Outside doctor's offices, institutions such as life insurance companies or private health insurance firms could be interested in our genetic data, and so could a potential employer. If, for example, they discovered from a predictive genetic test that there was an increased risk of an ailment such as bronchial asthma, which sometimes requires lifelong treatment, might one find oneself unable to take out any more insurance policies or even be refused a job? Reports are increasingly appearing in the press about insurers in the United States and possibly also in Europe having discriminated against customers on the grounds of genetic data. At Munich Rook we investigated this and even evaluated scientific reports on it and it turned out that there were no real cases of discrimination at any time. That is, arbitrary decisions by private insurance based on genetic data. In fact, the adjective genetic is treated very loosely, and some data referred to as genetic are not genetic at all. Nevertheless, private insurance companies want to assess a customer's individual risks before a contract is signed and information about the patient's state of health is very useful here, including the results of any diagnostic or predictive tests. Because this information is used to calculate the level of insurance contributions.
Genetic screening is of no interest to the insurance business. We accept the right not to know, but we have to know what the customer knows. So exchange of health data before a contract is signed is one of the basic principles of private life and health insurance companies. If data collected from a genetic screening reveals a high risk of disease, this could result in higher premium payments. Private insurance can only function if information equilibrium exists between the customer intending to take out insurance and the insurance company bearing the risk. If this equilibrium is disturbed, for instance, if the customer has a special risk profile drawn up by means of genetic tests and fails to tell the insurer about this when he signs the agreement, then his premium will be improperly low. The risk is high, however, and will have to be paid for later. So private insurance companies want to get as much information as possible about a customer before a contract is signed, and from that they calculate the likely medical expenses. But should insurers actually be granted access to medical data at all, or to the results of a predictive genetic test? In most cases, predictive genetic tests only show a predisposition for certain types of disease. Whether the disease will actually break out is something that cannot be predicted. So probabilities rather than secure knowledge are involved here. If a genetic test reveals a predisposition for asthma, it may mean, for instance, that there is a chance of around 60% that the disease will actually occur during the course of that person's life. One can, of course, take preventive measures and avoid sources of harm by giving up smoking, for example, but one can never be fully certain that symptoms of the disease will not arise. There is no doubt that making the results of a diagnostic test known is important. But releasing the results of a predictive genetic test can make things very tricky. There's a very grey area between predisposition and disease, and scientists are constantly arguing about it. It's important and relevant for us when it's risk-relevant and involves medical treatment or medical monitoring. In those cases, it's important, and we include it in the application test. Private insurance companies treat a great deal of information as important and much of what deviates from a person's normal state is often classified as disease, even where diseases that only might break out are involved. But who decides what is normal or healthy? And is treating a person differently because of a genetic predisposition fundamentally acceptable at all? Each of us is going to have to take a long, hard look at questions like these. Well, if you think about it from a legal point of view or from a medical law point of view, it's definitely a different situation if you diagnose a present illness, for instance, that you have a certain type of tumour, even if you do this by genetic diagnosis. And on the other hand, uh, diagnosing the fact that you have a predisposition, a higher risk of developing in the future a certain illness or certain type of tumour. In the latter case, it's, it's a predictive test trying to say what the statistic risk is of you developing this illness. It's a very different situation to my mind. When you talk about diagnosing an existing illness, well that might be necessary for the treatment of the illness or for well, deciding what's wrong with you. If we're talking about predictive testing, that could have health implications if there is some preventive measure that could be taken. It could also be justified in, in certain other cases, but to my mind it could not be justified just to, to get information for, for a potential insurer. Since genetic data are regarded as especially sensitive, therefore, many governments have already made efforts to limit access to this kind of information. One possible regulation is that when a life insurance policy is taken out, 
no medical information should be provided up to a certain level of insured sum, and that includes genetic information. In Germany, for example, the limit lies at 300,000 euro. Below that sum, the insurers may not request any genetic data, unless a genetic disease already exists. In many countries, governments are already limiting the kind of information that insurers are allowed to request. Only information regarding diseases that already exist or treatment that is already required is seen as relevant. In some countries, there is, uh, the view is taken that these risks, the genetic risks of a certain predisposition, are overestimated in relation to other risks such as uh, obesity or smoking or pollution or what have you. And in that case, it could, it could indicate discrimination. And it's also the fact that genetic information is not just information about the patient uh, that has taken the test, but also about genetic relatives. And this makes genetic information a bit special. So some countries, and among those Sweden, have restricted the possibility for um, not just insurance companies, but also other um, persons who would like to make a contract, such as an employer, for instance, to have access to genetic information. In some countries, even patients themselves have the option of deciding what medical data may be passed on. At the end of the day, we need ethical principles and proper regulations for how all our genetic information should be dealt with. The fact that a genetic test provides information not only about the subject, but also about his or her children, makes it all the more important to treat test results with discretion and sensitivity. Of course, the legislation can uh, be of different types. You can have prohibitions or you can have uh, legislation allowing development but under very careful control with procedures to take a step-by-step -step approach etc. So it is a challenge to legislate these kinds of areas but uh, it has to be done. So if the results of genetic tests are going to be stored digitally in the future and become increasingly available people need to be protected from unnecessary publication or unjustified use of test results by others. It's the responsibility of all of us to set precise limits here. <laughs>